Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. You know, I think it's fairly safe to say that we're not all great players, but it's certainly within each of us to obtain great results. It just often requires a greater, or lesser, usually greater, degree of help from the enemy team in order for those great results to happen. This, in the French Tier 9 premium battleship, the Jean Bart, is light oller. He's in the LGBFR clan, which at first I took uh, to be a French LGB community clan. It isn't. Uh, the LGB apparently stands for Les Glorières Batades, uh, which I'm not quite sure what that translates into. I thought it was the Glorious Bastards, but that's not how you spell it in French. Although possibly they've deliberately misspelt the bastards part so that they don't get into trouble <laughs> for abusing community guidelines, whatever. Anyway, uh, Lightoller is a straight 50% win rate player. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. He's not especially good and he's not especially bad either. If I could count on having 11 other players like this on my team every time I went into a random battle, I would consider myself incredibly lucky. Unfortunately, in reality, at least half of our team tend to consist of people who have a real hard time thinking and breathing at the same time, uh, which certainly appears to uh, be the case for the enemy team in this battle based on some of the baffling decisions we're going to see some of them make. Fortunately for Light Olive, the stars were in the right place, the planets were all aligned, and he just happened to be, more than once, in the right place at the right time to take advantage of the dumb fuckery of the enemy team. And I must stress, I'm not saying Light Olive's a bad player at all. He's absolutely not. He's completely average. And he does make mistakes, but the enemy team never seem to want to take advantage of it, and when they make mistakes, he jumps all over them. Which is, of course, exactly as it should be. Now, the enemy team are busy seizing an early cap advantage, um, which is kind of brave of the enemy team's destroyers, considering there's a tier 8 carrier in play on each team, but fairly typically, uh, Light Holler's team's carrier is doing absolutely nothing, and is sending his torpedo bombers through the one cap that is not actually being contested, because of course he is. Matters, of course, aren't helped by the fact that Light Holler's team has zero radar, and the enemy team have two. They have a Missouri and an Atlanta, although the Atlanta's radar is fairly short duration. I think it only lasts 20 seconds. Meanwhile, Lightol is getting his first salvo of the game off at extreme range against a broadsiding Nagato. And I have to say, this actually looks pretty good. And, oh, well, it only looked pretty good. <laughs> it was, it was all right, I suppose. It's better than nothing. Meanwhile, the friendly Oster Yotland has managed to get himself into the border of the cap circle here at Charlie, and he's arresting the enemy team as capture progress. And there is an enemy Atlanta on the other side of that island, but as long as the Oster Yotland doesn't do anything amazingly stupid, even if he gets radared, he should be totally fine. And now that the big boys have turned up to take over contesting the cap, the Oster Yotland is free to get clear uh, out of the Atlanta's pathetic 8.5 kilometer 20 second duration radar range. Uh, and make himself useful somewhere else. The Atlanta really is a terrible ship now. It used to be a lot of fun, but then the aircraft carrier rework nerfed its AA because it's heavily dependent on its 5-inch guns, and now all they do is generate flak bursts, which you can dodge. And uh, the cruiser armour and IFHE rework meant that the Atlanta can't even damage same-tier cruisers. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Bit of a brown trouser moment as the enemy mast pops out from behind the island. Well inside detection range. Okay, he's popped his smoke. It's a shame the team doesn't have any radar so they could uh, do something about that. But where there are destroyers, there are torpedoes. Now, Light Oller should be okay because he's nose in towards the uh, direction of the threat. But where are the torpedoes? We didn't see any torpedoes coming around the side of that island earlier, so it's not like the Mars is waiting for them to reload. He just seems to be choosing not to use them. Okay. Looks like the Atlanta's just popped his radar. Well, popped his radar 25 seconds ago, now it's expired. Um, and I'm pretty sure that it would have probably caught the Oster Yotland, but just as he was about to duck in the cover behind the island uh, where the friendly Nagato is, just over there to the east, so... It's all good. The 
first two casualties of this battle, however, are the enemy Shaws and the friendly Odin, who have just obliterated each other in a pitched point-blank range gunnery duel, um, which is quite surprising. They must have both had shots in the air at the same time and both sank each other. The friendly Brindisi, not watching where he's going, uh, getting his torpedoes into the Master's smokescreen up there, while the Oster Jotland pops him around the corner, probably hoping to catch himself an Atlanta, or possibly the Lion over there, or you never know your luck, maybe even the Mars, if he gets lucky and the Mars is relocated from the smokescreen, which is just dissipating now. Meanwhile, the enemy carrier player, instead of sending his planes after the Oster Jotland that just got lit up by the Atlanta's radar, no. No, he's attacking two heavy cruisers and a French battleship bristling with secondary and anti-aircraft gun mounts. Yeah. Meanwhile, Light Oller, not going around the corner, because he's pretty much constantly spotted, and he knows the Mars is still there, and he doesn't want to get torpedoed, although the Mars has been strangely reluctant to actually use his torpedoes thus far. Instead, with the high explosive loaded, because the line over there... Oh, and the Mars has just been respotted by the friendly carrier. And uh, going with the high explosive against the Lion, because the Lion is angled. And hasn't actually seen him yet. Although that situation is about to change. Aiming high in order to get the maximum value out of the high explosive shells on the superstructure and gets a fire, while at the same time triggering the reload booster. The Mars thinks, aha, the Jean Bart just fired at the Lion. This is all good. Well, yes and no. Uh, because the reload booster means that the main guns are ready to go again. And of course the Jean Bart secondaries were in range of the Mars, which is kind of lucky because there are not many targets on the enemy team that a Jean Bart secondaries are actually capable of doing any damage to. It's like Light Oller just ran himself into the island there, but it's all good. He's still angled against the Lion, and that shot sets a fire that finished off the Mars. The Mars, who still refuses to fire his torpedoes at anybody. Meanwhile, the enemy Shikaku, here come his rocket attack planes. And, yep, there it is. Now, what was remarkable about that is that that Shikaku just flew his rocket attack planes right over the top of the friendly Oster Yotland, who's about 10 kilometers away from the Shikaku and closing in. Didn't attack the Oster Yotland. <laughs> flew those rocket attack planes through the Nagato's AA and straight into the AA of the Jean Bart, the Surrey, and the Brindisi. I can't help but think that there was a better target on the way that he could have used those rocket planes against. But he didn't, and that target is going to sink him. Meanwhile, the friendly Surrey, right there, just made a remarkably poor decision. He came out and broadsided the Lion in order to get his torpedoes away. And the Lion, unlike most high-tier British battleships, actually knows what his armour-piercing ammunition is for. So the Surrey just lost, but then the Lion just throws away a chance to completely delete the Surrey as the Surrey turns around in the other direction, showing broadside again, presumably to get the torpedoes away from that side. And instead of deleting him, the Lion opens up on Light Oller. It does some damage, but, well, didn't do him any good. And he just gave up the opportunity to completely delete a heavy cruiser. Meanwhile, the Oster Yotland has just deleted the Shikaku after closing to suicide range and hitting him with multiple torpedoes, while the Shikaku stubbornly refused to attack him on at least two separate occasions when he had the chance. He's going after him with his surviving dive bombers now, of course, but, well, you know, a day late and a dollar short. The upside of all of this is that despite both teams being even on kills, the enemy team are well over 200 points ahead, because Lightoller's team are only now taking possession of their first capture point, and the enemy have held two for the best part of this game. Of course, the fact that the enemy team had two radars, in fact still have two radars, and Lightholder's team's carrier wasn't interested in scouting any of the contested cap circles didn't exactly help the destroyers on Lightholder's team very much at all. You know, I can't help but think that you've got two ships in a battle that have radar, and they're not in a division. There's a better way for the matchmaker to spread them around rather than putting them both on the same team. I mean, see if you can follow the mathematics here, although be warned, it is fairly high-level stuff. Two ships with radar, two teams. Two divided by two? That's one, isn't it? So one radar on each team. Seems to be a fairer way of doing it. Or is the maths just too complex and I don't get it? Is, 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 is there something going on here that you need a solid grounding in mathematics, like, you know, 
like somebody who works for programming a computer game can understand that I can't. Is, no? Maybe. I don't know. Like I said, maths was never my strong point. I don't program computer games for a living. Well, anyway, while I was struggling with the complex mathematical equations of trying to figure out a fair and equitable way of dividing two radars amongst two teams, uh, the team just had lost one of their surviving destroyers. Which is kind of surprising, considering how heavily the odds were stacked against this team's destroyers, but that Oster Yotland uh, is the only surviving destroyer in this battle. The enemy team have managed to lose all of theirs. That's not a huge amount of consolation for Lighthover's team, of course, because now they're not only uh, two kills behind, but they're also not far short of 500 points behind. So you could be forgiven at this point during the proceedings for thinking to yourself, how on earth could the enemy team possibly fuck this up? <laughs> <laughs> a perfectly natural question to ask. Uh, in response to which, I can only say, if you think it's not possible for a team to throw a game when they're as far ahead as this, you either all completely lack imagination, or you just haven't been playing wargaming products for long enough. So the Brindisi is slowing down to let Light Holler go first, and that's absolutely fine. Uh, you don't want to be going around a corner blinding a cruiser when there's a battleship around that can do it for you. Lightoller, of course, he understands that, you know, he's in the big ship with the... Well, it's not great armour, but it's better armour than a Brindisi. This is a French battleship, after all. It's mostly 32mm armour everywhere, which means it gets chewed up by cruiser high explosive spam. Whether they're heavy cruisers or light cruisers with the IFHE skill. And, oh, shit. In a bookie at 7.5 kilometres, and he's got the AP loaded... Light Holler starts to angle. That could have been a lot worse. Of course, he's also got the AP loaded, and the Ibuki is broadsiding him as well. And that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is a paddling. But why is the Ibuki broadsiding him? He must be launching torpedoes. But the friendly Graf Zeppelin's going to catch him with a torpedo as well, which leaves him on low enough health that even the terrible French 100mm secondaries should be able to take care of him while the main 380mm gun batteries take care of the Siegfried, who very, very unfortunately announced his presence while sailing broadside on, on a sliver of health of his own. And that's a double strike. Both the Ibuki and the Siegfried are down. The Atlanta has bitten off a little bit more than he can chew, as the Brindisi eats two, I think, yes, two of the Ibuki's torpedoes, and then sails face-first into the Atlanta's torpedoes. So basically the Brindisi over there has been playing gotta catch them all with every torpedo available. He's he's eaten torpedoes from the Ibuki, he's eaten torpedoes from the Atlanta. The Atlanta of course is dead, uh, which is great news for the Oste Yotland because it's one radar less, although everybody is still radar because the Missouri is within radar range. But what do you think's going to happen to the Brindisi? Because that's a Scharnhorst. So yeah, yeah, you can see them. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to catch them all, don't you? <laughs> Is there some kind of Italian cruiser mission going around where in one battle you have to get hit by at least three different sets of torpedoes from three different ships or something? Because if there is, that Brindisi is a winner! I'll tell you who's not a winner though, this Scharnhorst. Now he has to know that Lightoller is here. He was just radared by the Missouri. And to a certain extent you can appreciate the Scharnhorst not changing course because he's trying to thread the needle between the bunch of torpedoes. But, well, you don't have to keep moving forward while presenting a broadside in order for the Jean Bart to do that and score kill number six. Oh yeah, there was a Kraken Unleashed earlier, by the way. <laughs> I forgot to mention it at the time because there was so much else going on. The Brindisi was playing whack-a-mole with everybody's torpedoes. And suddenly it's three on three. Although the enemy team are still 400 points ahead, but that's 100 points ahead less than they were just a couple of minutes ago. In fact, was it even that long? Was it more than one minute? It's amazing how quickly things can change, isn't it? Uh-oh. Somebody's spotted. Oh, shit. Missouri, right behind you. I was thinking it can't be an enemy destroyer. There are no enemy destroyers left. Luckily, the Jean Bart does do a respectable turn of speed and he's able to get this big fat French ass around the corner while taking only minimal damage from the Missouri's 16-inch guns. Enemy Nagato ahead. 
The Nagato technically has him outgunned, but in order to make the maximum use of those guns, the Nagato is going to have to expose an uncomfortable amount of ankle. And, well, the benefit of being in the Jean Bart is that you don't have to expose the side of your ship in order to get all eight of your guns firing. And of course, he has some assistance from the Oster Yotland, who's launched a whole bunch of torpedoes in the Nagato's direction. I'm not quite sure what's going on here with the Nagato. He like he, it's like he noticed at the last second that Lightola was here, and started turning in towards him, which allowed him to catch as many of those torpedoes as he possibly could, and then starts angling away and turning his guns away once he'd eaten the torpedoes and it was too late, allowing Lightola to do that. So I don't know what the Nagato was thinking. I can't think of a single thing he did there that was right. To the rear, however, we have a Bismarck and Missouri-shaped problem as Lightola piles some steam on uh, to avoid getting torpedoed by his own Graf Zeppelin. The Oster Jotland, spotted, is getting the hell out of there, although it would be more helpful if he could get out of there in the direction of the enemy cap circle rather than heading away from it, although if you look at the minimap you'll be Delighted to see that the Graf Zeppelin is actually steaming towards and is going to start flipping the cap. But Lightoller is in a very, very bad spot here. Although the Bismarck, like the Nagato before him, seems to be determined to make it as easy as possible. <laughs> Broadside on against the French battleship at that kind of range. And he waits. He waits until Lightoller's shot him before he starts angling in. Not enough, of course. Lightoller still causes some significant damage. Although it's a Bismarck, it's nearly impossible to Citadel. Unlike the Missouri, who's just run himself aground broadside on. <laughs> In front of a Jean Bart using a reload booster. Oh my god, you couldn't make this shit up. Of course, the issue with a battleship like the Jean Bart, with all of its turrets in the front, is that it's very difficult to bring the guns to bear on a target behind you. And the Bismarck instantly obliges by piling on steam <laughs> and doing his level best to try to overtake instead of staying behind him where he was relatively safe and where Lightoller would have had to swing an uncomfortable amount of ship around in order to bring the guns to bear, exposing him to both 15 and the 16 inch armor piercing shells from the Missouri to the rear, who's managed to get himself off the island but is still pretty much sitting broadside on and somehow manages to fuck up that shot. <laughs> Lightola, why are you still alive? <laughs> the amount of broadside you were given to the Bismarck there, which he had to do in order to, you know, be able to shoot at the Bismarck, but the Bismarck made things easier for him by quite helpfully pulling up alongside him instead of saying in his rear quarter or even attempting to angle against him. But, well, you know, it's a yellow turret Bismarck. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> For those of you who have no idea what I'm giggling about, players in the Bismarck over here on the EU server uh, who have that yellow turret camo skin applied, they're not widely known for being the sharpest tools in the box. They're a bit like an Eisenhower captains. Or in this case, a bit like Missouri captains based on the evidence of this particular battle. And I think I might actually owe that Oster Yotland an apology going after the cap. Uh, probably wasn't the best use of his time with his rapid firing torpedoes. He's been doing great work against the enemy battleships. Like the Missouri here who just got his port side spanked horrifically. And now apparently OCD is compelling him to ensure that the same thing happens to his starboard side as well. Eight kills for Lightoller in the Jean Bart. And he didn't do anything particularly great, although he certainly didn't do anything particularly wrong. No, it was more a case of the enemy team all falling over themselves in their eagerness to become his victims as quickly and efficiently as they possibly could. Unfortunately, Lightoller didn't have a battle results screen uh, to go with this replay. So luckily for you, I've made one for him. And here it is. I'm on that bombshell. <laughs> what? That's art, that is. <laughs> On your knees, peasants. You're in the presence of greatness. <laughs> and I hope you've enjoyed today's battle, because that's it for today. As always, folks, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.